Welcome back to Zephyr Rapids. Now, as you can see here, it has developed substantially since my last video. It has jumped from 20,000 plus citizens all the way to 67,000 plus residents in the city proper and the city limits overall. It has very nearly reached the Metropolis milestone at 70,000 residents. And after that is the very last milestone in the game, Megalopolis. Now it should be mentioned that I have created a bus system infrastructure. This right here. This is a bus station and a bus depot respectively. I've constructed three of each. And when I do open bus routes throughout the districts, my plan is to start each bus route at the respective bus station and the bus depots will provide the buses themselves. We have one here at the western edge of Stevens Landing. We have another, yeah, another bus station and bus depot at the southern edge of Olive Plains here, which is incidentally the most densely populated residential district in the city. And then there's also going to be a third set, a bus depot here, and a bus station here at the central north banks, which also extends further past the highway here. I've begun to construct a separate residential district called uh, Mendoza Foothills, which is directly north of the Olive Plains, as you can see here. I simply call it Mendoza. And this street grid is something that I've coined a stained glass pattern, so to speak. It's a somewhat efficient street pattern that covers a lot of uh, zoned grids, as we can, yeah, as you can see here, that entire square-shaped grid has a lot of rectangular and triangular-shaped sections through the center, most of which are zoned for heavy residential, although some of which are also zoned for high density and low density resident yeah like this right here this section is zoned for low density residential which is single family homes things like that now i'm cutting into a light forest by building this residential section but that's not really that's not really important to me I'm not actually planning on making use of any of the forested areas, except in one respect. See Vasquez Park here? That's going to be a separate industrial district directly... Let's see, what direction is this? Yeah, that would be south. It's directly south of the South Banks, which has so far been developed as the primary industrial district of Zephyr Rapids proper. As you can see here, we have this primary section directly east of Stevens Landing, and we have the Tuna, which is now fully developed, even further east of South Banks proper. And I've also rebuilt the roads leading towards the roundabouts from the toll booths here, as you can see. In this case, there have been 45 cars charged last week. In this case, there have been 79 cars charged last week. 51 cars charged last week. And with these two, with these two, yeah, these two toll booths here, pardon me there. <clears throat> they're both one-way roads. So we have a one-way six-lane road leading to this roundabout here and a one-way six-lane road leading back out to the highway from that roundabout there. It's the most efficient traffic flow that I actually could think of given what I have already constructed. So, although the incoming 
toll booth here, which is by far the busiest toll booth and road. Uh, pardon me, I had to mute the mic, I had to sneeze there. This is by far the busiest boulevard leading towards any roundabout in the industrial district. But that's okay, it manages the uh, traffic at least somewhat. The traffic congestion doesn't actually reach all the way to the roundabout like it used to when both of the roads were actually connected to this one here. And I like how all of this has developed. Now, of course, there is a share of minor problems. We don't really have enough educated workers for this smaller commercial section in Meadowlark here. I've also expanded the garbage disposal system by quite a large extent. If you'll pardon me just one moment, I forgot to set my timer. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, timer has been set. Instead of just two, I have four incineration plants on the very western edge of the city limits here. And each of them, well, that one's not functioning at full capacity, but at full capacity, like these two right here, well, are any of them? No, none of them are functioning at full capacity, but when they are, they can generate up to 12 megawatts of electricity each. The vast majority of the electricity that is generated in the city limits is from this nuclear power plant here, which generates 640 megawatts. You can see the blue dot here. There used to be two solar plants along this stretch of road here in the 14 woodlands. The 14 woodlands, they have not been heavily developed. There are really only some infrastructure facilities like these incineration plants and the nuclear power plant. But what we also have is this prison here, Saddle which houses 77 out of possible... The only morning show featuring DJ yeah, 77 prisoners out of a possible 500 cells available. This is Jimmy Fry's coming to you from Studio 2. Whoa, whoa. For what it's worth, there's actually a fairly low crime rate throughout the entire city, so it does have that going for it. But for now, I have zoned the Mendoza foothills for double what has already been constructed in the residential district. And I've also zoned the small section in Vasquez Park for forestry industry specifically. Vasquez Park is specialized in that manner, so we'll see exactly what is constructed in that section there. I haven't done that yet, but it's time to start. There is one other thing that I have changed that I'll show right now. Yeah, right here. I've cut directly into the Stevens Landing District to create this much smaller district called Paragrove. It's specifically zoned for leisure-based commercial. It also has some waterfront real estate or residential strip along the riverbank here. And it's also unique to the area in that there are schools in the district as well. Well, directly adjacent to the district. Technically, those schools and the nearby park are actually constructed in the nearby Stevens Landing district instead. But they serve the Paragrove District directly. That is their purpose, because there are people living there. Stevens Landing has developed to a fairly substantial degree already. As you can see here, go ahead and get out of this and open up the inspection tool. These tall buildings have been constructed, as well as this one here. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Let's take a look. Gigastore. Okay, so that's basically an enormous vertical shopping mall. We'll see if that stays open, right? 
I swear, shopping malls in the U.S., they have not been doing very well, especially over the last decade. Alright, let's get on with this. I'll go ahead and unpause the game and... Oh, one more thing. I've opened up Hot Air Balloon Tours, although it would appear that nobody's actually making use of it. No visitors last week and no tourists. It should be noted that I do have the option to zone a commercial area specifically for tourists or leisure. And what I mean by leisure, let's go ahead and pick one and... Yeah, this here. That is a gym where people go to work out. Places like that, gyms, specialty stores. That's what denotes leisure in this game. And after I reach the 70,000 milestone, the, the Metropolis milestone, I'm going to purchase this land square due north of Meadowlark and Stevens Landing here. That should allow me to expand both Stevens Landing and Meadowlark. Meadowlark has been somewhat difficult to develop with all of the crisscrossing railways here, but I should at the very least be able to extend it north after I purchase that two kilometer by two kilometer land square. So let's get this started, shall we? There we go. The in-game, the date is March 7th, 2032. So it is in the near future. Yeah, the other part of the electrical infrastructure are these 12 wind turbines here. Each of them generate 20 megawatts of electricity. And they're all located directly beside that primary bridge. Let's see what's being constructed up here, shall we? I'm planning on placing Probably a police and a fire station up north here, and another one further south of that particular section in the Mendoza district. And there will need to be another high school and two more elementary schools as well, after this district is completely filled, or rather that section of the district. I know that for sure. I'll go ahead and pause and zoom in on this. This is the Commander Emerson Shepherd High School, as well as the nearby Silas Green Elementary. There need to be two elementary schools to cover the demand, so I went ahead and constructed them. Commander Emerson Shepherd, if anybody's watched my previous videos, that's directly from my Mass Effect playthrough. And that's under construction, so good. Those zoned areas are being developed, slowly but surely. What's going on up here? Is anything being built up here in Vasquez Park? I know it's powered. At least the northern edge of the street should be powered. There's another toll booth here, but nobody's making use of it because nobody has a reason to drive up here yet. Well, nothing is developing yet, not there anyway. Although slowly but surely. Yeah, here we go, something new here. The Cedar Residence. Appears to be an apartment complex of some kind along Miller Street here. Let's take a look at the uh, police station and clinic really quick. Nine out of ten squad cars are on patrol right now. Five criminals occupy the 20 possible holding cells in the jail, so... What about the medical clinic? Okay, the local medical clinic, uh, four out of eight ambulances are dispatched right now, and there are eight patients out of a possible 100 capacity who are 
being taken care of in that particular clinic, so I'm satisfied with that for now. What's happening over here? Anything? Not yet. Meadowlark has expanded quite a bit. That's a thriving rural community along the peripheral of Zephyr Rapids. I'm actually rather proud of that. Although I've yet to figure out exactly what to do with the 14 woodlands aside from placing facilities that I don't necessarily want to be right next to the city or residents. That's the purpose of the district so far. Although it is zoned for logging industry if necessary, so I can develop it in that way if I want to. Right now, 326 workers are employed in the district, so there is that. Oh, I should mention, let me go ahead and offer a comparison here. Meadowlark has a total of 7,237 residents living in it, with 2,566 workers employed in that district, so it does employ a few people, or at least a few hundred people from outside the district, that is worth noting. It's owned specifically for agricultural industries, you can see here. Now by far, the largest amount of residents who live in the city are in the Olive Plains here. A total of 53,261 residents actually live in the Olive Plains. That's out of a total population of 67,515 total residents in the entire city limits. So that is an absolutely enormous residential district that is occupied by tens of thousands of people. But that's going to change once Mendoza is more thoroughly developed. Eventually the North Banks is going to extend north of the highway here. I don't know whether or not I'm going to zone this northern section as a separate tourism-based commercial area. I don't know for sure. I've been considering it. The border is roughly to the west side of this cloverleaf intersection here where the dot is indicating. And anything east of that respectively is Mendoza. But as, as you can see here, the total population of Mendoza at least so far is 6,655 residents. Go ahead and unpause here. It looks like it's about mid-afternoon right now. Oh, that's not good. Go ahead and pause. What's this? The Giga store is on fire. Okay, and a fire truck is already there, as you can see here. Go ahead and unpause. Very good response time. Very good. Have quite a number of garbage trucks nearby. See that? Alright, they've extinguished that fire. That's a relief. I was a little bit worried about that. Okay, this section is beginning to develop here. Right now, the only public transport in the city is a nominal taxi system. That's going to change during my next video though. By the time I record my next video, the bus system should be in place. It's long overdue and I have the infrastructure available for it, so there's really no reason not to have several bus routes in the city. We have another fire here. What's going on? At the All The Things Superstore. Okay, okay. Just need to wait for a response. Come on, get a fire engine there. We need a fire engine in this section right here. 
Okay, one's on its way. See that? Okay, good, good. All right, the population has now reached uh, 67,744 residents. We have a few developments along this outer edge of Miller Street in the Mendoza expansion here. That's good. It's going very strong. The stained glass, so-called stained glass street pattern is one of my favorite street patterns. It's a little bit strange looking, but it is, it is efficient and effective and reaching every single zoned grid in between the spaces, so to speak. I don't like having a lot of open land if I can help it. I want fully developed grids if I can if I can muster it. What's this here? It would appear that garbage trucks are having some difficulty reaching this eastern edge of the Olive Plains. Okay, but they've reached that point. I saw one of the icons dissipate, so that's good. Uh, a lot of dead people are... All those skull and crossbone icons indicate a deceased person that needs to be picked up by mortuary staff. So I'm not liking that right now, but there isn't too much I can do about it, at least for the time being. There's always a slow response, no matter how close a facility is, either a cemetery or a crematorium. I utilize both in the city. Okay, this section, this office zone section, is being developed. Okay, the law firm. Okay, that's a legal office, that medium-sized tower there. Happy Face Travel Agency. And... Who works there? One highly educated worker works at the Happy Face Travel Agency. That's good to know. Good to know. All right, so that section is slowly being developed as we speak. Oh, holy. Okay, hold on, hold on. What is this? Those came out of nowhere. What those icons indicate is that these businesses, these manufacturing facilities, do not have the proper services to function at their capacity. Too few services, so that's not good. The tuna is experiencing a bit of trouble on the eastern side, it would seem. Could it have, to, could it, could it have anything to do with the traffic congestion? Because I've noticed that. Uh, let's see here. What's this vehicle right here? That's an oil truck. And this one here? No, 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 not that one. That vehicle. Another oil truck. Okay. We have a garbage truck directly ahead. What's this? What's directly in front of all of that? A pickup truck owned by a Cedric Mason. He is a high school student at Desmond Evans Secondary Academy. He resides at the Grove Residence and he is driving to the Commercial Center in Stevens Landing. Well, Cedric, I don't know if you're the one holding up all that traffic, but be careful not to do that, huh? Ah, oh, dang. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that, see if it gets worse. I hope not. I really hope not, because I did everything I could to improve the traffic flow in this district. The South Banks. Yeah, it's happening over here at the eastern edge of this South Bank section. See that? And by contrast, the traffic congestion along Jones Street here and Park Street, I don't see how... Okay, wait, no, Garnet Street. There is a bit of congestion here at this major intersection here. Garnet Street is a... Yeah, that is a very long street. It goes all the way along the South Banks, past Stevens Landing, onto Paragrove, 
and very nearly to Meadowlark, although once it reaches Meadowlark, it turns into Charles Street. Once it reaches the, uh, yeah, this point right here in Paragrove. The Charles Bridge goes directly over, over the uh, rail line along the eastern edge of Meadowlark here. Okay, night has fallen. <laughs> so how do I handle this? What's going on here? Too few services? It would really help if it told me exactly what service it needed to operate. So what's going on? What service do I need to improve? I know there's water and power. Oh, I see what the problem is. I see what the problem is. I probably need to open up more public transport, don't I? I'll have to hold off on that. Because that isn't what this video is about. Right now, I'm simply developing the districts along the expansions I have constructed, so while I want to start the bus routes right now, that isn't the nature of this video. I'm going to have to wait. Fault tech cameras. Have to compartmentalize to here. Got to go big. Although this That's is spreading, the problem is definitely the spreading. See this? The loudest. Our lenses, the longest. Needs Camera bus routes, that's why. They're tools. Tools used to create. In fact, the most but I'm going to wait on that, like I said. Afraid to take outside. It's a little bit Only it's a little best. bit reckless to wait on that, but You're listening to City's radio. I don't know. If that's the only I problem I have to deal with, the only major problem I have to deal with, well, it's frankly, I can deal with it. There's a window into another room where Alex sits and moves all the knobs. Hi, Alex. Alex says his microphone. Okay, so the Mendoza Foothills is developing fairly steadily right now. For millennia, these gentle and graceful giants roamed. Basically, anything beyond the highway here. And also, not beyond this point of the clover, clover leaf intersection leading off of the highway is Mendoza. And anything south of it to this point along this bridge, but not beyond this point. This is uh, central North Banks here. It's a very well-developed commercial area that has a different architectural style compared to Stevens Landing. The Central North Banks has the European architectural style, the default style, and Stevens Landing has the North American architectural style, so that is worth noting. Uh, what happened here? Okay, so one of the large towers has been abandoned. Wonder how many people are squatting inside of there. Well, this is a problem. Hmm. I know how to fix it, but like I said, I want to hold off until I reach the uh, next milestone. I don't want to open up bus routes quite yet. This problem has come at the worst possible time, but then again, when is a good time that they could come? I would say there isn't. All right, for some reason, Vasquez Park is not developing right now. What's going on? Pause. I know a way to find out. Yeah, according to this... Uh, okay. Vasquez Park needs to begin development. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to extend the power lines... Very slightly to this point... Along the edge of that toll booth. That should allow the total power grid to overlap just slightly across the roads here. And that should allow the zoned areas here to begin development. The area already has water. It just needs electricity to develop properly. So, unpause. 
Excuse me. Oh, that's not good. Multiple issues to deal with, but... I'll have to deal with it later. It's not going to impede the, de the development of the expansions that I've made. Although at the same time, it is causing a lot of problems for the existing developments in these areas, so... A lot of gridlock along Williams Street on the right side here. Okay, it's at this intersection that there's a problem. There's that oil truck that I zoomed in on earlier. Okay, then. 68,567 residents now live in the city. Uh, okay, okay. Garbage collection. Come on, guys. You need to get up to Mendoza here. There are two bridges across that highway. They're, and they're wide roads, too. Look at this. There's no reason they should be having trouble reaching Mendoza. Unless they're coming across congestion through the Olive Plains. That is possible. Ah, blast. Now it's extended to the central area of the tuna. And it's all the same problem. They don't have sufficient services to maintain their existence. That's not a good thing for industry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm a little bit congested. I'm a little bit congested right now, but I'm hanging on. I'm not really sick. It's just allergies for the summer uh, let's see here okay what those icons indicate pause if you watch my previous videos what all of these indicate there aren't enough customers the green and white icons the leisure based businesses that's all for fun they're like bowling alleys they're like gyms anything you can just cut loose in, unwind, either or. Like for example, what exactly is this? Another gym. And this, seafood delicacies. And this, nightclub happy hamster. That's an interesting name for a nightclub, but okay. Okay, so this area is beginning to develop. That's good, good. Uh, and what's... Trident Accounting. Okay, that's, a, that's an accountant's office. Along Heather Finch Street here. Pause. Let's see. Yeah, just as I thought. Okay. As it turns out, I did zone the outer edge of... Let's see. What is that? Lewis Street. For office space. We had a building that upgraded just now in that section. What upgraded? Customer service services. Well, that's very straightforward, although redundant. Good to know, good to know. How's the industrial district doing? Uh, not good, not good at all. I'm waiting until I reach that milestone though. I'm being stubborn, I know, but I want the city to be at least a metropolis before I open up the bus lines. I know it's overdue, but it's not ready yet. Not according to my plans, so... Uh, in spite of the issues, I'm sticking to my plan. Yeah, I know that's not infrastructure. Like I said, they have power and water. What is this? Best parts. 
Okay, my best guess is that would be some sort of machinist shop. Hmm. Okay, is anything developing up here in Vasquez? Not quite yet. Pause. Let's see if I actually did that right. Did I extend that far enough? Maybe not. Okay. Okay, I can do that. I have to extend it directly into the zoned area to make this work. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay. Alright, so Mendoza has been developing very well. Yeah, see all that? There are plenty of places for people to live in the city limits. The entire idea was that the Olive Plains was supposed to be the upper end residential district where people of a higher socioeconomic demographic live. Essentially high end housing. Mendoza is supposed to be the affordable housing district. Meadowlark is supposed to be more rural mainly single family homes, although there is a relatively compact section for high density residential, as you can see here. But almost everything is single family housing in Meadowlark. Hmm. Boy, I really had my workout cut. I really have my work cut out for me. After I reach the next milestone, this is a serious problem. See all these red icons here? That means all of those businesses are on the verge of closing because they don't have proper services to maintain their efficiencies. So I'm skating the edge here. I'm really skating the edge, but when aren't I? Let's be honest about that. It's a big city at this point. There's going to be problems. I just need to troubleshoot them as they come along. The Company. Yeah, see that? It is simply called The Company. And that enormous tower, only 15 workers are employed there. What? Talk about a waste of space. What's that icon up here? Oh, look at that. Tyrell. Very interesting movie reference there. Okay, Tyrell Industries. Apparently they own that building. Come on now, get up to 70,000 so I can open up those bus lines. It's going to be okay if some isolated pockets are abandoned in the industrial area, but I can't have any wide swaths of the industrial area being affected by that. That's going to affect the job market. Okay, good. We finally have a little bit of development up here in Vasquez. What is it, though? Piles of lumber. All right. So what are the piles of lumber called? Pellet Fuels Limited. Okay, that's appropriate. It would appear the entire eastern half of the tuna is being affected by this issue. I don't like that one bit. Oh, and look at that. They don't have enough customers either. That's another widespread issue. Be patient, guys. When I reach the, when I reach the next milestone, I'm going to open up those bus lines and with any luck, that should help. 
Oh, but there's several abandoned businesses up here in this small commercial section in Meadowlark. You see this? Let's pick one. Super Pharmacy is abandoned. This one over here, Organic Foods, is abandoned. That's because they couldn't find enough. They couldn't find enough well or highly educated workers. That's what that problem is. So how exactly are the schools doing? Uh, 819 out of a thousand slots. That's near capacity. 226 out of 300. 226 out of 300. Again, near capacity. But Meadowlark proper, what are we looking at here? The oldest high school in Meadowlark, the Elk Hills High School. 758 students out of a thousand admission slots. Okay, what about the other one though? It's somewhere along here. Let's see, can I find it? Yeah, it's right here. Scarlet Secondary School has 764 student slots out of 1,000 filled. The total high school students throughout the entire city of Zephyr Rapids, 10,558. So, quite a large portion of the populations. It's something to consider. All right, so the schools aren't quite at capacity right now, but there is one that I haven't checked though. What about Paragrove? That is at capacity. Paragrove High School has 1,000 students out of 1,000 slots filled. And the elementary school? Yeah, Paragrove Elementary, both of them. 193 out of 300 and 213 out of 300, respectively. And directly beside that are the police stations and the firehouse. Uh, I'm in decent shape in that regard. I'm waiting though. I'm waiting to reach 70,000. When this city is a metropolis, that is when I'm opening the bus routes, but only then. This is excruciating, but I have to wait. I need to stick to my plan, otherwise... Well, what is the plan, then? <laughs> How exactly do I put that, right? There's a hot air balloon. So why are people touring in a hot air balloon at this time of night? Well, I suppose it's a nice view. What about the hospital? How are they doing? Okay, pause. Uh, seven out of 30 ambulances are dispatched, and only 12 out of 500 patient beds are occupied right now, so they're in good shape. Unpause. It's worth noting the Desmond Evans secondary and primary academies are at capacity finally. that particular secondary and primary school campus has been developed to its fullest extent, so that's worth noting. It's along the south portion of the central Olive Plains here. What about Mendoza? How are they doing? Uh, the Briarwood residents. Okay, so eight adults and four young adults live in that, what appears to be a smaller apartment complex. All of them are uneducated. Although it appears to be a fairly affordable neighborhood, so... Hey, give it to them. That's the entire point. I've said it before, there's a place for everybody in this city. We don't want to push anybody out. Anybody can find a job, anybody can work here, as long as they pay their rent and their taxes, I don't care. 
How's this school doing? Copper Horizon Primary Academy. Okay, 188 out of 300 students. Again, 188 out of 300 students. Police Station, Rosemary Precinct, has all 10 of their squad cars dispatched at this time. So they're busy. They're very busy. Uh, have I ever placed a, a police precinct along Forest Street here? Well, I know where to find out. Unpause. All while generally making more noise than anyone could Let's see here. So yeah, see all the purple highlights? Sippy sip coffee fans. Burn Basically purple coffee. spires. Get that indicates a police station. So, okay here. Yeah. Hello. That's actually a bit of an issue. There are no police stations along the very eastern or southern edge of the Olive Plains expansion. I never realized that up until now. I'll need to keep an eye on that. If crime if crime rates spike in this area, I need to build at least two more police stations to make up the difference. Although I imagine the adjacent police precincts in Mendoza and the North Banks can also take up the slack. I don't know. The lowest price is possible. We have a house fire here. Hit. That's not good. Unlike the local sports teams, you can count on us every year. What is that? Ah, the cozy residence. So only two senior citizens live there. And my customers happiness. Guys, go in and save them. Mentioned earlier in the advertisement. Come on now. Just remember, when the game's on the line, who do you count on? There Still we go. Okay. They're that, taking care of that who, fire. Uh, check out our ad in the weekly nickel. <laughs> okay, Don has Radio, broken. 69,600 residents now live in the city. I'm waiting for that 70,000 mark. All right, Vasquez is beginning to develop. Uh, Pellet Fuels Limited. Planks for Life, Pellet Fuels Limited, and Lumber Company is under construction. Okay. Good, good. But I don't like this. See these eastern sections in the South Banks? Look at that ugly abandoned tower there. The mega shopping center. It must have been a little bit too ambitious. What about that down there? What is that? Yeah, that building here. Albatross Publishing. Okay. Zoom out again. All right, 69,007. 724 residents now live in Zephyr Rapids. Almost there. What about the police precinct up at Mendoza? I don't want them to be overwhelmed. Nine out of 10 squad cars, eight out of 20 holding cells are occupied. Just barely, they're right on the edge, so to speak. Although the expansion is developing very well. That's good, that's good. Alright, keep going. Keep going. Okay, what I'm going to do right now, I need to be careful here. Demolish that. And watch that to make sure there's still power. Okay, so the forestry industry, apparently what that does, it builds lumber companies, essentially, which makes perfect sense. That's good. Are these guys going to lose power after I did that, though? No, they're not. They're okay. I'll leave it the way it is, then. Alright, 69,870 people. 
live in the city limits. Oh. Alright, the expansions. Haven't really looked into this very often during this playthrough here. Or during this, during this video. We have only had one building developed so far along Eliza Crowley Street. But the, but the expansion zone for office, yeah, the expansion zone for office space is thriving though. Look at this, master architects. Uh, let's see here, live and learn training, occupational training. I would think. What's this? Microndo Game Studio. Okay, they're a game developer. Very good. Very good. 69,948 residents. Oh boy, these sections are starting to become abandoned. I don't like that, but I need to wait. Okay, almost to the milestone. Almost. 69,963. There we go. I have reached the milestone, Metropolis. And as you can see here, there's only one more. After I reach 90,000, it's a megalopolis. For now, I get a two kilometer by two kilometer land square and a municipal airport, not an international airport, but a municipal airport. So I'll see where I can build that during the next video. But for right now, this is what I'm going to do. Close that, pause the game at 70,002 residents, go up to areas, as you can see here, all of the blue sections are areas I have purchased. I'm going to expand it due north of Paragrove, Stevens Landing, and Meadowlark. All right, let's take a look at it first. Suitable area for building, 54%. Well, that's because there's a big swath of the river going through the center of it, but I can live with that. I can extend the commercial area quite well. All right, let's buy that. Very good, look at that. Close out of this, let's take a look at my new land square. Okay, we have a rail bridge here with a train on it. Let's zoom in on that. What's this now? A freight train transporting cargo to Portville. Okay, that probably came out of the South Banks. Now, as you can see here, just one last thing. See here? Stevens Landing here, what I'm highlighting in white. Shaped a bit like Mississippi right now, but I'm going to have it extend due east of the rail line in these three land sections here that I'm highlighting right now. That's the plan. Paragrove is never going to extend beyond that riverfront and this small section of land here along the bank. But Stevens Landing is going to have another strip along that land. That's the plan. Now, as far as Meadowlark is concerned, it is going to extend along both this land square here and that side after I purchase that land square with the next milestone. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and call that a wrap. Thank you for watching, and please keep an eye out for the next installment of City Skylines. It should be uploaded this coming Wednesday.